Pokemon. It's possible there stands no bigger multimedia franchise in the minds of nostalgic young adults. Last year, the series launched its ninth generation of video games, over a quarter century after the premiere of Red and Green versions in 1996. And the franchise shows no signs of stopping. Still, no IP is immune to the possibility of lost media, and Pokemon has experienced this multiple times. And so today, we're going to explore some of the most interesting examples I could find. From a mind-boggling lost screenplay draft of a famous Pokemon movie, to shorts that could only be seen at a Japanese planetarium, some of these cases are particularly interesting and still others have shockingly little information available about them. Welcome to Top Tower Review, the program where we look back at media through the ages, and today we're talking Pokemon Lost Media. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gold Rescue Team Challenge the Gold Rank Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gold Rescue Team Challenge the Gold Rank is a 2007 PC video game demo based on the first Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games, Blue Rescue Team for the Nintendo DS, and Red Rescue Team for the Game Boy Advance, both of which had been released approximately two years prior. Gold Rescue Team was released exclusively in South Korea on the official Korean Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Special Players website. Ever since the website went down, however, Gold Rescue Team has been missing. What is fascinating about this game demo is that it is not an emulation of the Game Boy game, but rather a game made for the PC from the ground up with its own engine. Those that have dived into the code for the game's files discovered that the game was built after Blue Rescue Team, and therefore the build is based on that game. However, the actual gameplay of Gold Rescue Team uses only one screen, like Red Rescue Team. According to those who played the demo, the game is almost identical to the gameplay of Blue Rescue Team, including content up to the Great Canyon where you encounter Zatu. Today, Lost Media researchers hope that someone from South Korea has some way to make this demo work. Still, it is questionable if the game will ever function, due to the need for a connection to a specific server. Unfortunately, until someone comes forward with more information, this uniquely developed demo project remains completely lost. Pokemon the Movie 3 – Takeshi Shudo Draft Pokemon the Movie 3, also known as Pokemon Spell of the Unknown, and Pokemon Lord of the Unknown Tower in Japan, released in the year 2000. However, the original plans for the film were completely different than the adventure with Entei and Molly we ended up with. Takeshi Shudo was the original lead writer of the Pokemon anime series up through the Johto Journeys arc, and the release of this third feature film. Having been with the program from the start, this was intended to be a sort of capstone to Shudo's work on the franchise, and as a result the planned plot was very, very different than the Pokemon we ended up with, and likely would have change the overarching lore for Pokemon forever, if the plan went forward. Specifically, Shudo planned for Ash, Pikachu, and his friends to discover the original real-world animals of Earth and how Pokemon came to evolve from these creatures. This would be done through the discovery of a real-life Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton, which was brought back to life in a similar fashion to fossil Pokemon, which leads to the dino rampaging across the Pokemon world, with only Ash, his friends, and his Pokemon to help stop it from destroying everything. This idea is drastically different to the world of Pokemon we know today, and was likely shot down due to the large-scale impact such lore would have on the entire multimedia franchise. Shudo seemed very interested in exploring the world of Pokemon, its origins, and how Pokemon came to be, which led him to the idea. He fleshed out his thoughts in more detail on his personal blog, where he recounts his work on the anime series and his process with writing his original screenplay for Pokemon 3. Quote, Games and anime dramas are different. Anime needs a story. Of course, the game also has a story, but the hero of the game is the player. But anime doesn't work that way. The player of the game is not the main character. Drama requires various settings for the drama to be established. Even if they are depicted in anime, the characters cannot move without a setting. In the first place, what is the world where Pokemon exist? The game's documentation was pretty haphazard. If the game is fun when you start playing it, that's fine. However, anime dramas are in trouble. Why are there no animals other than Pokemon? Therefore, I supplement 
supplemented and added my own Pokemon world. The supplement is not finished. There will be some supplementary information that can't be written until Pokemon is finished airing. In other words, it's a story in which another existence appears in a world where there are only fantasy Pokemon and humans. The story begins with the discovery of a Tyrannosaurus fossil. The Tyrannosaurus is of course a dinosaur that lived in the Mesozoic era of Earth. Pokemon has fossil Pokemon, so what are the fossils of dinosaurs? In short, it was a roundabout way, but it was a story that glimpsed what is a world where animals are only Pokemon and humans. Shudo spent over six months on the screenplay, but it was ultimately rejected by producers on the grounds that, quote, a story where a bunch of minerals gain consciousness and come to life won't be a hit. Uh, what? Hello? While ultimately I believe many would agree the producers made the correct decision, such a unique plot would have been wild to see come to fruition. Also note the amusing line about waiting until Pokemon ended. It's crazy to think that even back then at the tail end of Pokemon Mania in the early 2000s, that Shudo assumed the anime would end and the series retire. That Pokemon would end. Just like most trends. But amazingly, it didn't just survive, it thrived for years to come. It's probable he even considered Pokemon 3 to be the finale of the Pokemon story. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, Shudo's blog entries are the limit of available information about the screenplay, as the original draft has never been released or leaked in any form, and likely never will. Pokemon 3D Adventure Mew Osagase Pokemon 3D Adventure Mew Osagase, which translates to Pokemon 3D Adventure Find Mew, is a 2005 animated short film which premiered as an attraction at Poke Park, a temporary theme park in Nagoya, Japan, from March 18, 2005 to September 25, 2005. The temporary Poke Park opened to the public, including a variety of Pokemon themed rides, including a Rayquaza themed steel roller coaster, a large Ferris wheel shaped like a Pokeball, and a Latias and Latios themed swinging pirate ship ride. The park itself was free to enter, with each attraction costing a different cash amount to ride. One of these attractions was a large 3D theater, which played the 11 minute long short film with 3D effects through 3D glasses. Having premiered in 2005, the animation style, characters, and setting are all from the third generation of Pokemon games and the advanced era in the anime series in the Hoenn region. The plot focused on the characters searching for the mythical Pokemon Mew with Team Rocket in tow. I find niche releases from this era in Pokemon to be particularly fascinating, as 2003 to 2006 was arguably the years Pokemon was at its least popular. The only known footage of the film to exist is from a short teaser trailer which was posted to YouTube by a user named ChainSwordCS on August 24, 2020. After the park closed in September of 2005, it moved to Taiwan for the summer of 2006. All of the attractions from Poke Park 2005 came with the move with a few notable exceptions such as the larger Rayquaza Steel roller coaster. The short film was shown yet again at Poke Park Taiwan. However, it is notable that the combined the screening with another 3D animated short, the 14 minute long Pikachu's Great Underwater Adventure, which brought the attraction's total runtime to almost 27 minutes. In addition to the combination, the ending theme for the film was different from the 2005 screening. The film was not shown again for many, many years after the closing of Poke Park Taiwan on September 24, 2006. Both the 2005 and 2006 versions of the film remain lost to this very day. The combined version shown at the 2006 Taiwan Poke Park did, however, have two additional theatrical theatrical releases in 2017 and 2020, such as the screening at the Toyohashi Museum of Natural History, where it was screened from February 1, 2020 to June 20, 2020. Considering the film's age and the setting of a natural history museum, where all of the other screenings are about sea life or dinosaurs, it's very interesting to say the least. Perhaps if those who own the distribution rights to the film are willing to screen it as recently as 2020, we could have an opportunity to discover the film again in the future and archive it properly. Until then, however, it is fascinating to look back at this unique mystery of the temporary Poke Park during a particularly foggy era of Pokemon history. With the exception of the clips found in the teaser trailer, the short remains lost in its entirety and the search for it continues. Pokemon 2000 Adventure Game the Pokemon 2000 Adventure Game was a browser-based first-person puzzle game developed by Cyberworld for their proprietary internet browser. The browser utilized their unique software, which they called Cuborg. Cuborg would allow developers to make browser-based games in the style of id Software's FPS games like Wolfenstein and Doom by using images and web pages as side panels pulled directly from Internet Explorer 5 or 6. In the late 90s and early 2000s, in the fledgling days of internet marketing, Cyberworld began developing these FPS games for various 
licensed brands. I have to admit, the Cyberworld browser works surprisingly well, and even had a level editor that was extremely easy to use, making any users from this era able to make their own games and pages. The company made it big, however, when AOL Time Warner reached out to them, asking them to make an internet tie-in game for the upcoming theatrical release of the Pokemon 2000 movie. Cyberworld happily agreed to the project. It released in early 2000 to massive success. In that time, Cyberworld estimated the downloads of their proprietary browser were in the millions, and that the game had earned the company almost $2 million. It wasn't to last, however, as the game only remained online for a handful of months before it was forcibly taken down and never seen from again. When Warner Brothers originally reached out to Cyberworld with the pitch of developing a game, they envisioned a project much smaller in scope, likely something akin to the dozens of other Flash games made with Shockwave in this era. When they discovered the scale of what the Cuborg technology could achieve, and with their own 3D Pokemon games releasing around this time, such as Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Snap for the Nintendo 64, put a stop to the game, forcing Cyberworld to remove it from their website. Screenshots were all that survived for many years, as even those who still had the game downloaded could not properly run the game without errors due to the need for a connection to a specific internet server. Not unlike the trouble with Mystery Dungeon Gold Rescue Team, it was considered lost in its near entirety for years, before YouTuber Cody Burns of Every Game Ever contacted the game's technical director, Neil Marshall, and developer Eddie Ruminski, who was barely out of high school at the time of the game's creation. Marshall had actually been contacted multiple times by Lost Media Wiki users, and was generally helpful and had attempted to restore the game, but was unable to for the aforementioned reasons. However, after reaching out to other ex-Cyberworld developers and using old downloads of the Cyberworld browser, Ruminski was able to do a nearly complete playthrough of the game on his personal computer. He achieved this using game files from a CD he had from his time at Cyberworld. All footage being shown here is from that playthrough, which premiered in a personal interview on Every Game Ever. That video is linked below. Burns' interview with the two of them and hearing how the game was made is a very fascinating listen, and I highly recommend checking it out if you have the time. Thankfully, the efforts of Burns, Marshall, Ruminski, and Lost Media Wiki users such as Doom Tay and others have all culminated in footage of a playthrough of the game, allowing its events to be preserved. Until we hear further, however, a downloadable, fully playable version of the game is not here. The need for server connections and the use of decades-old Internet Explorer versions means the game would likely need to be decompiled and reconstructed in some fashion. I suppose we shall see if that ever happens. Until then, this game and its footage stands as a memory for this wildly creative era of Internet development, at the turn of the millennium. Pocket Monsters Diamond and Pearl, Atsumare Pokemon Boshi Matsuri. Pocket Monsters Diamond and Pearl Atsumare Pokemon Boshi Matsuri is an animated Pokemon short approximately 22 minutes long which was created specifically for Konica and Minolta planetariums. It played in five different planetariums over the course of exactly one year, with the first showings beginning on May 31, 2008 and ending at the fifth and final location on May 31, 2009. The plot of the short was that Satoshi, aka Ash Ketchum, Pikachu, Hikari, aka Dawn, and Takeshi, aka Brock, travel to the Pokemon Star Festival. The hosts of the festival are clearly Team Rocket, and slowly the Pokemon start to disappear one by one, up to and including Pikachu, and so Ash and his friends must defeat Team Rocket. Additional information regarding the short was found via a Japanese mother who goes by the username Tori Haha. She runs a parenting blog called Miyagi Playing With Children, with posts about various activities parents can do with their children in and around Miyagi Prefecture. One of these posts describes an encounter with the Pokemon Short at one of these planetariums. Quote, the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl Atsumare Pokemon Star Festival that was projected into the planetarium does not start immediately after the projection, but for about 20 minutes the center staff will directly explain the starry sky and constellations that can be seen in Osakai today. The Pokemon program is about 25 minutes. Rather than a video, it seems that motionless pictures are devised to make them look like they are moving. It was fun. There may have been very little animation overall in the final production, but unfortunately it is still unknown. These two sentences and only one singular photograph from inside the planetarium are all that survive. The short played at these five planetariums and nowhere else, and remains lost to this day. And there we have it, a few cases of Pokemon Lost Media that I find endlessly fascinating. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. We have a lot of great content that's going to be coming out here soon. It's all been in the works for a while now, but I'm so happy to finally be getting back to releasing new videos again. Please join our Discord as well. We can discuss video ideas, track the status of Lost Media, and more. Linked in the description down below. For now, this has been Silence, signing out. I'll see you all next time. 
on Top Tower Review.